got another video in the worm area. I'm starting off this week with looking at the totes. These are the basic totes, no holes in the bottom, and they normally have a cover which has a vent at the top of it, but I don't currently have the top on my bins because they were particularly wet for the last couple of weeks. It seems like in some areas the bin is drying out, but it's still not the right consistency that I want for the castings. Now this bin has been going for some time, so if next week it is still clumpy and um, doesn't appear to be drying out, I am going to make the decision to harvest this bin despite it being wet. It might do it some good to be in a harvest tray to dry out before sifting rather than to try to do it while still having to feed the tray um, and put food into the castings. So I'm just going to feed this up with some squash, the remaining carrot roots, and some beets, put the grit in, and finish it up. the basic tote number two this one I have covered with a piece of cheesecloth so this one once I was able to fluff up the castings found this one to be even wetter than the sister bin so for both of these bins it might be a decision I make after one more week to go ahead and begin the harvest if I'm not mistaken they have been processing since June of this year and usually at three to four months is when I begin the harvest but I elected not to because these bins were super wet now the castings on this one I had a giant worm ball right there which I'm trying to show but everything was focused where I had put the food the worms the cardboard so I'm just mixing everything up so it has can be dispersed throughout the bin and then I'm feeding this one up with the same mix of food and grit and covering it up to the vermi bag tote these are the recently restarted bins so the castings in here are still mostly unprocessed cocoa core and cardboard but as I mixed it up I noticed that a lot of the carrot tops were unprocessed it seems like the carrot part was no longer um, visible but the carrot tops themselves were still plentiful in the bin and because of that I chose not to add additional food I don't like to add or overfeed food to my bins just because it's been a week the worms can take a week off of any fresh food they'll just reprocess the castings and the cardboard in there so I'm just adding the grit to this one and move on to the next and over to the second Fermi bag tote. This one, the castings had the similar consistency to the sister bin as well, but they were a little on the dry side which can happen in the winter in the totes because the moisture does escape from the material pretty well. 
But the same thing existed here. There was a lot of green carrot tops in the bin as well as a lot of cardboard that still was unprocessed. So for both vermi bag totes, I chose not to put any additional food and just added the grit on top and covered them up. Next week, if they seem a little dry, I have a squirt gun that I use to water the bin if necessary. And lastly is the Vermi Bag Mini. This one was very, very wet. The material was clumpy and definitely more wet than my preferences. So last week I did put two layers of cardboard, one above and one below the food. And as I'm mixing it in, the food area, of course, is very wet and the material below is wet. So I'm trying to get as much material mixed in with the drier cardboard shreddings as possible. Even though the material was wet, I still elected to feed this bin because most of the fresh food was gone. It was really only the cardboard that was left. So I put a layer of food in. I didn't do any extra layer of cardboard, added the grit and finished up the bin. That concludes the update on my bins this week. Hope you've enjoyed the content.